This here is by far my favourite piece of gear. It is a Balinese thousand rupiah. It probably costs more to make this than it is actually worth, but for any like tripod plate or mount that I need tightened, this just always does the trick. Always. Yeah, right, guys, Paul here, back with another video. I'm not entirely sure how this is going to turn out, so if everything goes to plan and I end up making something cool, I'll put that as the intro. If not, we're just going to have to see. <laughs> so you probably didn't notice about me, but I am a bit of a minimalist. Apart from when it comes to camera gear, I have a shitload of that. I don't have that much stuff and it's a few different reasons, mainly because I like the simple living, I don't like having a lot of clutter, I don't mind wearing the same thing every day. I think I adapted the whole minimalist lifestyle when I started travelling. I literally fit all my belongings into my camera backpack, my small carry-on suitcase. A little fun fact of the week. The reason I mention this is because I have basically worn out my favourite shoe. These are the Nike Air Max's Motion 2s. Just genuinely love this shoe. I just love the style, comfort, perfect. But I've worn out the soles a little bit. There's mud permanently into here and they're basically not good for a day-to-day -day shoe anymore. I went ahead and bought a second pair. Brand new, a lot fresher as you can see. And before I go ahead and dirty them up and just ruin them again, <laughs> um, I want to make something cool out of them. What I want to create, you ask, is I'm not entirely sure. I just know I want to incorporate something, something that I can do with these. So, whilst I was lacing up this shoe, an idea struck me. Since we're going to all this trouble with just setting up lighting and try to get some cool shots of this and maybe making something cool out of this, why don't we make it a little more productive? So I don't know about yourself, but I struggle putting out consistent content. I get too wrapped up on making one thing that ends up like stretching out for me not posting anything for weeks. This has been a common theme throughout my entire creative life. So I think today, the purpose of today's video is batching some content. Spending one day creating a bunch of content that we can extend over the next week or so. How we're going to do that, you ask? First of all, we need to make a plan of the stuff we want to shoot and what we want to get out of it. I know I want to make a cinemagraph of these rotating, maybe flashing between that and the older shoe. Along the way with making the cinemagraph for these, we can shoot some b-roll of them, maybe get some product shots, stuff we can use for Instagram, portfolio pieces. So I also have this watch to shoot. It's from Atypical Man. Basically, I need to do some flat lays of that and now thinking about it, I think I want to maybe do... Yeah, I think I maybe don't want to do like a cinemagraph of like the second hand ticking and we could probably do that whilst we're shooting some of the flat lay stuff for it. Yeah, so basically we just need to be smart whilst we're shooting this content and then we get so much more out of it. So I'm going to stop rambling now and we're going to get started and let's go. I think we've got a big day ahead of us. So I've laid out a rough plan of what we're going to be doing today. Uh, the first thing we're going to be shooting is the watch. It's a pretty sleek watch, I actually really like it. Uh, now keeping in mind when shooting products for a client, for spec work, or whatever you want to do, you want to make sure it always aligns with the branding. So I've covered their website, I've looked at their Instagram to gather this kind of idea that they like this, this sleek minimal style for their watches. So we're going to try to incorporate that into today's shoot. Chosen my one of my favorite t-shirts, lay everything down on. I have my watch nice and center here. The idea behind everything is again a sleek black and silver minimal style. up the workspace a little bit. I've actually decided to do it on the floor. It means I can have the light a lot closer and I don't have to stand on chairs to do the actual shot. After a lot of failed attempts, I've settled on this kind of composition and this layout. You can spend more time on it, perfect it a little bit more, but we've got a few things to do today and I kind of want to get everything done. So this is the behind the scenes of the overhead rig I've managed to Jimmy up essentially. So we've got all this going on here and then we have the counterweight. We are going to most likely desaturate the book and desaturate this pen because I want this black monochrome style to it. Might leave a little bit of the red here and I might even change this to red um, because the watch, you probably can't tell, the watch has little, tiny little red notches all the way around for the seconds. that I'm happy with most of those shots, I'm going to try and work out the cinemagraph. If you watched my video last week when I used burst laps to create a cinemagraph, I think we're going to try and follow the same workflow on this. And if it doesn't work, we'll just switch over to video because there's 
as I mentioned, there's a few different ways to do it. The reason I like to use photos instead of videos is because I like to have a little bit more wiggle room when it comes to post-production. So I think all that worked out. I'm gonna to need to wait until I get back to the computer to make sure it actually worked. So now it's time to go and shoot the shoes. So I'm gonna set up a little studio space and we're basically gonna go through that now. I think the main takeaways what we're gonna get is obviously some, some product shots of the shoes, some video clips product shots of the shoes, and then we're gonna be creating that cinemagraph. Let's just go and set up that space and we'll get on it. Sweet. So as you can probably see behind me, a little bit of a mess, but basically this is where we're gonna be setting up our scene. Now again, only very hard to do this with just the one camera because I really just want to set up my composition and kind of lock it off. Now I'm going to keep the lighting super basic on this. I'm going to go dots XL60, maybe a 45 degree angle of my shoe, and then I'm going to have then I'm going to have this orange light as a kicker just to kind of separate it from the background. So first, we're going to tackle the cinemagraph. We have the camera at 35 mil on a crop body, which is about 55 mil, and then we're just going to have the shoe suspended in midair, spinning around, and then we're just going to take a bunch of photos, similar to what we did in the cinemagraph a couple of weeks ago. So when you put all these shots together, it should look a little something like this. Next up, we got the B-roll sequence with the hopes of putting this into a little commercial type shoot, similar to something you might have seen on Austin Paul's uh, YouTube channel. So basically, I've got my lazy Suzanne here and I'm going to set up my shoes and just basically take a couple of rotating shots of all the little details. Air sign on the back, the fabric. To get all these shots, I'm going to either be using my 85 or the 70 to 200. And to get those extra fine close up detail shots of like the textures and stuff, we're going to be using macro tubes. Like this basically emulates like a macro lens. It costs like 20 bucks, really affordable. I'd recommend getting these. I'm studying up on how to actually shoot product videos. And I'm just trying to grasp from all that random information that is on the internet and put it into something tangible. So when you put all these shots together, it should look a little something like this. My god, that was a lot of work. And let me be real for you for just a second, just before we get into breaking down this. After I filmed all this and I was reviewing the footage, I was reviewing the photos, I really didn't like anything. I focused on quantity so much that the quality really dropped. And this kind of stuck with me for like a week and a half. I didn't really look at the footage or photos um, as soon as that thought got into my head. Just because I focused so much on just trying to get a lot done in one day, even try to create this YouTube video, the, like, the quality just suffered. But then a few wise words were actually passed down to me by Tyler Babin. Sometimes I do, however, think though there is benefit in pursuing quantity over quality. Gary would always say is that like, Quantity produces quality. That even though I spent a bunch of hours today creating a handful of good images, I think in a lot of ways that made me a better photographer than what it would have been if I would have spent the same amount of time creating one great image. Just that whole video, and it kind of touches on basically the same topic that I was actually filming. Those last few words in his video really spoke to me and made me actually want to get this video done. Because at the end of it, fair enough, some of it might not be the best work I've ever done, but at the end of it, I will be a better photographer and filmmaker for doing it. I could have spent like a whole day just doing flat lay stuff and I don't think it would have been any better than I am now. A whole medley of useful skills that I can put into future projects. Just before we move on, thank you Tyler, thank you Gary, much appreciated. I know I kind of brought you along on most of the things. I just wanted to kind of highlight some of the things I think I did off camera. I took a photo of the watch whilst it was on me. As well as that shot, I also tested out some flat lays with the shoes and the watch. And then when I was editing that B-roll sequence together, I then needed an opening shot. That's where I set up my desk in the same lighting with the Nike on top of the shoe box. That is basically all I did off screen. But yeah, let me know what you think guys. I think everything kind of turned out well. I was really happy that I was able to use the cinemagraph of the floating new shoes and incorporate it into that little B-roll sequence. 
I think it worked out well. Now, in future, I really want to start implementing this batching content. However, so the thing I've really learned today and something you can maybe take away with you is if you're going to batch content, maybe just make it all photos or all videos. I was jumping around the place, my entire house was a mess and it properly drained me after I did all that. So guys, I'm gonna let you go. Please consider liking, subscribing and commenting, doing all those beautiful YouTube things. But until next time guys, peace.